We are learning this morning that the CIA director, William Burns, secretly met with the Taliban's leader in Kabul yesterday. Joining me right now is the former acting secretary for the Department of Homeland Security. He is a visiting fellow at the Heritage Foundation, Chad Wolf. Chad, it's great to see you once again. Thanks very much for being here. The last time you joined me, we were talking about how the criminal cartels were pretty much in charge of who got into America. Now we can add one other group to the people who are deciding who goes to America, and that is terrorists and the Taliban. Are you worried about the terrorism threat from the fall of Afghanistan? How do you see things? Well, absolutely, Maria. I think the fall of Afghanistan to the Taliban uh, represents a national security threat to the United States. Not only will they control more territory in Afghanistan than they did on 9-11, but obviously now they have uh, military equipment at their disposal. And so we have to be worried about safe haven for terrorism now reconstituting itself in Afghanistan. And what does that mean to the homeland? I think now that we don't, you know, we've evacuated an embassy, we're going to have limited to no personnel in country gathering intelligence, uh, recruiting assets and the like there, I think is, is very concerning. And that was, that's what concerns me as I look at the threats to the homeland as they originate overseas. This is just extraordinary. I know that we had apprehended, the U.S. had apprehended uh, people from MS-13, people on the terrorism watch list that actually did access America through the wide open border. You, you think that perhaps with the, with the border as weak and, and porous as it is, we'll see terrorists trying to come through as well? Well, I think we're already seeing that. What we know is that the Border Patrol apprehends about 125 different nationalities along that border almost every week and every month. The former uh, Border Patrol chief left and on his way out indicated that they are seeing more and more suspected terrorists across that border every day, every week and every month. So absolutely, we need to be concerned about that because if, whether it's the Taliban or other terrorist organizations that are looking to come to the U.S. to harm Americans, what they are seeing now is that there is a blueprint to get into the country illegally, and that's through the southwest border. Yeah, we're just showing this graphic here. The year is not even up yet, and already we've seen 1.3 million migrants apprehended yeah. at the border just in 2021. We are talking about record numbers every month, and yet this administration refuses to call it a crisis and refuses to do anything about it. Well, you're, you're absolutely right. But, you know, the numbers that you cite are actually just the numbers that we apprehend. Uh, so if it's 1.2, 1.3 thus far in this fiscal year, there's probably another 100,000 of what we call gotaways that we never apprehend. These are the individuals that can pay the cartels more and more money to cross them in areas that the Border Patrol is not in. So I'm more concerned about the individuals that we're not apprehending than the ones that we are, because those are the true criminals suspected terrorists and other individuals that actually want to come into the country that don't want to see the Border Patrol uh, and to go into U.S. communities. Right. And we have many of them on camera ourselves. Our drone uh, technology picked up a group of uh, migrants running through a cornfield uh, at night. Uh, the Del Rio sector doesn't have the, the proper number of, uh, uh, of uh, gu guides to actually police this. They're getting crushed, as Border Patrol says, that they only have a fraction of the agents needed to deal with the surge of migrants, Chad. I spoke with a uh, border agent over the weekend. He told me 80 of his agents right now, 80, 80, have COVID. Uh, another 20 are in quarantine, so he's gotten, uh, he's had to take a number of agents off the beat, and I know that's even with taking resources from other borders. I, I understand we've taken resources from the northern border with Canada. We've also taken resources from the, um, from the coastal borders, Louisiana and Alabama right. and Florida as well. Your, your reaction to whether or not we can actually police this? Well, we can't, and I think that's very clear. There is a national security crisis going on on that border. As you indicated, we have Border Patrol agents out or not on the line because of COVID or being quarantined, but the vast majority that are on the job today are in Border Patrol facilities taking care of these thousands and thousands of minors, and that's not where they should be, Maria. They need to be on the line uh, protecting the country from 
uh, contraband from illicit drugs crossing the border. They need to be out there and not in Border Patrol facilities. So whether it's being quarantined from COVID or in Border Patrol facilities, what we know is they're not doing their national security mission that they need to be doing, that the country needs them to be doing at this time. Well, it's just extraordinary. We are now in the seventh month of Joe Biden's presidency, and we've got massive out-of-control fires in a number of places, the border, and, of course, let me end on Afghanistan. Chad, where do you think this is going? I mean, look, uh, the president says he wants everybody out by August 31st. The Taliban is w sending us a warning. The spokesperson from the Taliban said if, if, if the U.S. does not have all of its people out by the 31st, there will be repercussions. There w this will provoke a response, according to the Taliban. Well, I think it's crazy that we set a deadline, and even more so that we advertised it to the Taliban and others. So now they're holding our feet to the fire. It was the wrong approach. We needed to make sure that we get U.S. Americans out of there, embassy personnel, contractors, and everyone else before we withdraw. And to set an arbitrary deadline because you want out before the September 11th anniversary is just, it's the wrong approach. It's putting politics and, and public affairs in front of security and doing the right thing. So I think hopefully we relook at that. We make an evaluation as the 31st approaches. And if we don't have all our people out and it's not secure to get more and more out, then we need to stay beyond that date um, and continue to make sure that we get all Americans out of Afghanistan. Look, I know it would be really expensive and it'll be egg on his face, but shouldn't he just reopen Bagram Air, Air Base, just as uh, our reporters on the J Jennifer Griffin asked uh, Mr. Kirby, the spokesperson for the Pentagon? I mean, wouldn't that be the right thing to do so that we have the wherewithal to get our people out safely? Well, I think it was a colossal mistake to pull out of Bagram. That is a secure airfield uh, from a variety, from a terrain perspective, from a security perspective. You can control that. You can't control Kabul International Airport the same way. Whether or not we actually have control over Bagram or whether it's being overrun right now by Taliban is the question. And that's probably what DOD and the administration oh. is looking at. So hopefully uh, they, they decide what they can do. But whether it's Bagram or Kabul, it's making sure that we provide security, that we locate Americans, and we get them out of Afghanistan and let it, instead of letting them be on their own to try to get to that airport. Yep. Uh, it's great points that you're making this morning, Chad. Good to see you. Thanks very much, Secretary Chad Wolf.